How many bitcoins does it take to get some goddamn respect in this town? What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Bitcoin breaking very critical resistance yesterday. However, struggling to maintain above it today. Now, if you watched my video from yesterday, I was very excited about this short-term bullish price action for Bitcoin, but I did say to hold off on doing anything crazy because we were expecting a bit of a drawdown. Now, is this it for Bitcoin? Are we looking for the bounce back today or is there a little bit more to go? Well, I want to show you a very interesting fractal from 2020 that could be the biggest clue as to what Bitcoin could be doing next. Also, there is most likely going to be an insane opportunity for a trade. If you guys are interested, I'll show you exactly what I'm looking at. And I also want to talk a little bit about some of the on-chain data. Now, we've been hearing, oh, these guys are accumulating all this hopium. Well, does on-chain data actually prove that that's what's really happening? So that's what we're going to talk about today. If that's that sounds good to you smash the likes get subscribed or just watch the video doesn't matter to me guys we're here we're talking about crypto so let's dive in let's have a look and of course i do hope that everyone out there is having a great day today i probably said that already but i mean it so i'm saying it again so having a look right here you guys can see that we have been maintaining above this 50 exponential moving average, which is this purple line right here. We have wicked down to the standard um, or just the regular moving average, whatever you want to call it, which is this yellow line. And it does seem like no matter what we do, even when we wick all the way down, we always end up closing the weekly candle above it. So you could say that this is quite bullish. The bulls are defending this level. They don't want Bitcoin to drop any lower. But the one thing we were concerned about about was the DXY, the US dollar index. And you can see that we actually have had a bit of a rebound right here off of the previous resistance that we had from up here turning into support. So we know time and time again, I say this on the channel, but when the dollar looks like it's strengthening, often Bitcoin does have an inverse correlation to that, right? So if we do see the dollar continuing to move to the upside, what does that mean for Bitcoin? Well, historically, it usually isn't good. Could this time be different? Of course, there's always a first for everything, right? But if we have a look at what is happening on Bitcoin, you're noticing that as the DXY is going up over on CME futures, we are in fact having that sell. We actually had a blood diamond and a manipulation right here, right? And it is still trending downwards. And really over on futures, you want to get back above that $42,660 level. We need Bitcoin to really come all the way back up here, retest it for some kind of continuation. Now, a lot of people have pointed out, yes, this could potentially be a double bottom, which is usually a bullish pattern for Bitcoin. And yes, we have seen momentum going to the upside. So everything points to the fact that we should be having a reversal outside of, yeah, we did fall into a little bit of red down here on the money flow, but obviously to be expected after, you know, an asset falls 50 plus percent. That's the kind of things you're looking at. Now, I'm not seeing anybody over on Bitfinex hopping into any shorts anytime soon. These are the shorts. They're still down. In fact, they're falling still as I'm making this video. So it doesn't really appear as if the whales are looking to short at these levels. So what is actually happening? Well, longs, staying quite level, right? But one of the biggest concerns to me is this major support flipped resistance. Now you can actually see right here, we actually had this support. We wicked down to it. We wicked down to it. We went below it for a little bit of a bear trap and now we've fallen completely below it. And if I zoom in right here, you guys can actually see that we are getting sort of rejected off the bottom. So what was once acting as support is now acting as resistance. And if you're wondering why this level is so important, if we actually go back all the way to the very, very bottom of that crazy crash that we had back in March of 2020 right here, and we take this point of contact, and then we had multiple points of contact in this cluster before we took off, and we follow that line all the way up here, you could see that it is now acting as resistance for essentially the first time since we had the crash due to the pandemic scare, right? So this is like a psychological level that a lot of traders are looking at, and the bulls ultimately need to break above it. Now, for everybody asking, what is the numerical value of this level? Well, it doesn't have a numerical value. It's a trend line. So currently, as of today, as of making the video, we would need to break above $37,704. As the weeks continue, though, 
that level gets higher and higher and higher, putting more pressure on the bulls, right? And you can actually see that we also have this major resistance coming down right here. They're gonna meet at an apex at around the first week of August. So this could be a very critical level. Could we continue to bounce around sideways, maybe just go up like this uh, until that level and, th and then have the breakout in uh, the first week of August? That is very, very possible. You could see right here in yesterday's video, we were talking about breaking these levels, this downward sloping resistance. We did in fact have what I believe was a bull trap right here. I do believe that this wick down here was a bear trap. Personally, I don't think Bitcoin is going to go below $28,000. Could it? Of course, anything is possible. We're, we're, we're all just making assumptions based on the data presented in front of us. However, we have seen a major capitulation wick, which is one thing you're looking for. And we have also seen the W pattern, which is usually a sign of a double bottom. But of course, we are still not putting in a higher high, right? That is the problem. Now in yesterday's video, we actually broke out of this and we did hit the, literally, I mean, we wicked above it just a few dollars, hit the exact level that I was looking for. Now, I wasn't looking to particularly long or short this move. I was waiting for the move to play out. So what I said in yesterday's video was we are going to come back down. We did. Okay, great. That's what we expected. And now we're looking to find that support. We definitely don't want to start losing major supports because then... Well, then you guys already know we're, it's probably not looking too good for Bitcoin. But essentially what we need to do is bounce around the $34,000 level right here where we had this level right here. And it was a bit of a... um. If you look at it, guys, it's kind of like an asymmetrical triangle that has some, uh, you know, some bull traps and bear traps in it. So that's the first level we're looking at. Now, would it be possible for us to fall below that level and still be bullish? Well, yes, but we would only have one more opportunity to defend the line, and that would be right around here, right around that $32,630 level. Because if we fall below this level, then we're going to start putting in, you know, another uh, bottom, which would not be good. Now, you could argue that maybe Maybe we'll come down here and, and, and it could form something like a bit of a head and shoulders pattern, which would be, uh, you know, if it's an inverse, then we would be looking for a move to the upside. But what I'm really paying more attention to rather than the specific price action, because right now we've just been chopping between 30,000 and 36,000, just bouncing around for the past month. So I'm not really as concerned. What I'm looking at is down here, I want to see the money flow staying in the green. This is the four hour, by the way, which is a very important chart in my opinion when it comes to this move playing out. I wanna see this come up here. I wanna see this green start to grow. And like I said, what we were looking for was one smaller wave coming down just below this line right here. So you could see we have the big wave, we have the medium wave, and I'm looking for a smaller wave. And if we can stay in the green, we can get around one of these resistances or supports, even if it's down here, even if it's down in the $32,600 level, I'm not going to get bearish just yet because it could be, uh, you know, inverse head and shoulder, and it would be putting in a higher low Then that for me would be the ultimate trade. And I would be going extremely long on that trade guys. And I will let you know when I decide to take that trade currently right now, it's still a little bit too choppy. I mean, if if you want to day trade these moves, go ahead, guys. I mean, you know, I, I've had a few good scalps. You know, you can get a little bit here and there, but realistically, we need that confirmation and we don't have a confirmation of an uptrend just yet, right? So that's what I'm looking for. First level is $34,080. Second level is $32,600. And honestly, if it went down to $32,400, I would still take that. Anything lower than that, and you're really starting to play with fire, guys. And like I said, if we come down to this level, or this level, the money flow stays in the green and we get a smaller momentum wave, then yes, 100%, I am going long on that and I will say bottom is in and 100% we are confirmed going to the upside. I probably shouldn't say 100% because nobody really ever knows, but like 95%, I, I would take that risk. I would definitely take that risk on that trade. And I will let you guys know when I do see that happening. So make sure you get subscribed. Make, make sure you turn on bell notification if you guys want to get these updates. I'm trying to get them out a little bit earlier than usual. So you guys have more time to you know, see what's going on and make your own decision. So I want to talk about some on-chain analysis. So you guys know Willy Woo. He does a lot of on-chain analysis. Now, some people say on-chain analysis doesn't matter. It, it has nothing to do with the price action. Take it with a grain of salt, but it does leave clues. He says, we're not seeing the normal bear market metrics. People are coming. We've got new users at all-time highs. The user growth is near all-time high on the network. We've got all the little guys coming in and buying and stacking. People that have holdings of less than one Bitcoin are buying Bitcoin furiously. 
No one's selling. The whales are sideways. The people with 100 Bitcoin and upwards, those are the dolphins and the sharks. They are sideways. Anyone less than 100 Bitcoin, they're stacking. Price right now is going sideways, bearish, right? It is bearish. We are in a downtrend. It looks like a white coffee and accumulation price pattern. If that plays out, then the last wick down to the $28,000, $29,000 level that we had should have been the final test of the bottom. That was the spring we were looking for. If that does actually play out, then that would be the reversal, right? That, then that would be reaccumulation over. And, you know, rather than myself making this chart, I found this really great one from Gert uh, Van Lagen over on Twitter. And he basically showed, you know, first we had this accumulation pattern right here. Then we had our distribution at the top. And then currently right here, we are potentially in the reaccumulation pattern. And yes, it's going to be a little bit of choppy waters down here, but you could see that if this does play out, and it is a big if because nobody knows, right? These Wyckoff patterns, I mean, they're very, um, it's very objective, right? Um, or subjective. It's, there are no clear signs. I, I'm sorry about that, guys. I had a little bit of a brain fart right there. I know someone's going to correct me in the comments, but point that I'm trying to make is these are not exact patterns, right? They're similar. They have fractals, but they don't follow an exact pattern, right? Because when we were up here, we actually had watched that video um, that that guy put out. I forget his name. He was like the most popular video at the time. Um, objectification or something. Is that his name? Something like that. I forget his name. Well, I think I follow the guy, actually. It's uh, oh, Uncomplication. Yeah, he, he's been putting out some good videos. Go check that out. But, you know, as you can see up here, we actually bounced up when it had shown that we were supposed to go down. So it did, in fact, have a fake out. But check this out. And I want to give a massive shout out to Crypto Zombie community member Cloud, FFFWB1 over on Twitter. And he was mentioning the extreme similarities of this move that happened from 9,000 to 12,400 back down to 8,000, uh, or not back down to 8,000, back down to around 10,000 that happened in 2020. So I actually decided why not? Let's actually have a look at this and see, does this fit into our current situation? Because you have to admit, this does kind of look like the Wyckoff top a little bit, right? With these like sort of fake outs, higher high and then lower high and then massive dump and then all these crazy wicks down here. And then could we be, you know, in, in, in one of these, one of these uh, areas right here? Well, what we could do very simply is, is just actually take a, uh, just take this bar chart. We could just, I guess we could start from like somewhere like here. And uh, I mean, if you want, I, I could go farther. I could go to like here to see if this actually would play out. We could do something like this. And uh, then if we actually lay this over the uh, chart that we have up here, let me just actually grab that, pull that up here. Gotta give me a second here. I'm gonna have to stretch this out because obviously it's very different. So, I mean, could this actually fit into here a little bit? I mean, having a look, and like I said, these charts never actually play out exactly the same. You know, they're, they're fractals of each other. But um, yeah, I mean, it does look very similar, right? Now, obviously right here, after this, we, you know, we, this is the, the bull trap that we had. We actually started and then we came down and continued upwards. Whereas right now, um, we did have the, we, we have come down. So we have deviated from this fractal, but keep in mind, like I said, these accumulation patterns, they're not exact. They're, they're similar, right? But they're not exact replications of each other. So, I mean, if we just take this sort of fractal right here, I know it's not exact. It's a little bit rough. Let me actually try to put the top to the actual top. Um, I mean, regardless of how you break this down, it, it points upwards of over $70,000. And we did see, um, was it Morgan Creek that was talking about the $70,000 Bitcoin potentially by the end of this year? So, I mean, let me know what you guys think. You know, is this, it's, it's pretty darn similar, right? Massive sell-off, a bit of the reaccumulation area. And then, you know, maybe we do go up like this and then come back down. Everybody gets scared, go sideways again for a little bit before having the blast off. It's very possible, uh, but I just wanted to bring this to you guys. And, and it could, it could potentially be a bit of a hint to what is happening for Bitcoin in the future. Like I said, you know, they're not exact, but they kind of tend to rhyme. So once again, shout out to Cloud Crypto Zombie community member for pointing that out. Excellent, excellent, uh, e excellent find. So that was really interesting. So I want to talk about the fact that we're still hearing this FUD, right? So we have this guy, Aswath 
Damadaran, Damadaran, I don't, probably saying that wrong, professor of finance at New York University Stern School of Business. He has reiterated his criticism of Bitcoin. According to, I'm not even going to try to say his name again, this guy, Bitcoin's limited, limited use in microtransactions flies in the face of the claims that Bitcoin is viable as a form of money, stating, quote, a good currency, in my view, is one that's used to buy coffee, buy your house, buy a car, and on that count, Bitcoin has failed, and not just failed, it has failed miserably. Well, number one, here, let's just point this out. Bitcoin is essentially a store of value. It is gold 2.0, but if you don't want to listen to that explanation, the best explanation is simply Gershom's Law. If you don't know what Gershom's Law is, it's essentially the idea that bad money drives out good money. What does this mean? Well, it means that given the option to buy a cup of coffee, if you had to, or let's make it a little bit of a larger purchase. A cup of coffee is like very minuscule. Let's say you're going to buy your groceries, right? Let's say you got $200 worth of groceries. You're buying for the whole family for the week or something like that, right? So if the cashier said to you, we accept dollars and we accept Bitcoin. Now you're looking at your Bitcoin, although you can't really look at it. Maybe you're looking at your wallet on your phone and you're looking at the cash in your hand, right? If you had the option you know that cash is guaranteed to get devalued. You know that fiat is going to lose 99% of its purchasing power inevitably over the course of, you know, the decades, our lifetime even potentially. And Bitcoin over the last 12 years has gone up on average 3x, give or take. Yes, we've had some highs and some lows, but historically, if you've held, if you bought Bitcoin at any level and you've held it for three and a half years, everyone is in profit. I mean, the model has not been broken yet. So Bitcoin is the better store of value. So, okay, maybe it's not a currency, but really, even if it was, even if let's say you were using the Lightning Network, why would you give away something that you knew that is virtually guaranteed to go up in value versus something that you know is virtually guaranteed to continue to lose its value? Hence why it doesn't make sense to buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin. I hate this argument. It's completely just ignorant. And yeah, I mean, that's, so that's Gershom's law. Hope you guys learned something today. Um, but I do want to end on a little bit of good news today. So New York Digital Investment Group, or NYDIG, has partnered with the Atlanta-based enterprise payment behemoth NCR to enable Bitcoin services for banks and credit unions in the United States. According to Forbes on Wednesday, the deal will see 650 banks and credit unions in the U.S. able to provide Bitcoin trading services to their over 24 million customers. NYDIG will reportedly offer its in-house Bitcoin custody solution, removing a major regulatory impediment for communities banks and other financial institutions looking to deal in cryptocurrencies. Well, certainly sounds like they're interested, especially the fact that 650 banks, as well as credit unions with over 24 million customers are looking to get on board the Bitcoin bandwagon. So main thing to do right now, if you're trading, like I said, don't be trying to trade this chop, wait for the setups. I showed you exactly exactly what I'm doing. Rewind the video and watch that part again. That is 100% my strategy moving forward. As far as trading goes, I accumulate all the time. I buy as much Bitcoin as I can. I bought I bought some more Bitcoin at 36,000 and then it fell and everyone was like, oh, see, it fell. Yeah, well, it went back to like almost 36 the other day. So it's all about dollar cost averaging. If it goes lower, I'll buy more. But as far as trading is concerned, I don't want to be shorting these levels. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should be shorting. You know, maybe I should be a, more of a bear right now. Things are kind of bearish. But for me personally... I'm looking for that reversal. I, I, I just, I, I think it would be absolutely devastating for Bitcoin to just fall 54%, just to go sideways, just to fall again. It's possible, maybe that's what they're going to do to shake out the weak hands, to just crush everybody's soul, and then they can just gobble it all up for themselves. It would just be extremely uncharacteristic of Bitcoin to do something like this. I'm open-minded for firsts. It's just a lot less probable than, you know, potentially just reaccumulation and then continuing the uptrend. But you let me know. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe I should be more bearish or maybe I should be more bullish. I don't know. Drop your comment below. Let me know. What do you guys think about this fractal? What do you guys think about the potential Wyckoff 
accumulation? Do you think it's just a meme or do you think it's actually going to happen? I'd love to hear it from you guys. And once again, if you guys are interested in learning how to trade, make sure that you check out my tutorial on Bybit. It should be popping up above and use the links below if you guys want. They have extra bonuses for you guys. I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well just check those out anyway. Um, but if you are new to trading, I always recommend do a few trades using the test net or the paper account, right? So that way you're not freaking out. You can sleep at night and then you can practice your trading before actually using your real funds. Okay. So that is it for me today, guys. Be safe out there. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. I hope you know that by now. I'm just a guy on the internet, but thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You are the reason that I make these videos. I love you. Enjoy your week. And if you have not seen these videos popping up right here, click them, check them out right now. And until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.